Yo, what is going on guys? I hope you're having a great day. In today's video, I'll be going over three distorted rotoscope effects. They're really simple to do and I think it's a cool way to just add those trippy effects to your edits. In After Effects, we're going to first start out by creating that background rotating effect where it's like slightly warped and then it rotates towards the left. Let's first begin by rotoscoping our subject. So grab the roto brush tool, double click the layer. In order to make your brush bigger, you want to hold the control button, left click and drag your mouse. And then if there's any unwanted parts that you didn't want to rotoscope, you can hold the alt button and just drag over your mouse to get rid of those parts. I'm going to now rotoscope my subject. After rotoscoping your subject, you want to then click the freeze button in order to lock in your rotoscope. Go back into the composition and now we have our rotoscope subject. I'm going to increase the feather to around like 11 and then decrease the shift edge to negative 60. Now we have smoother edges for our subject. You want to then click that layer, click control D in order to duplicate it. And then for this bottom layer, delete the roto brush effect. And I'm also just going to rename these layers just to make it easier for me to identify. Name the bottom one to BG for background. We're going to be adding a few effects to this background layer. Let's first begin by adding a transform. With this transform effect, we're going to be keyframing the scale as well as the rotation but I want it to start at six frames. So keyframe the scale as well as the rotation. Click that layer, click U to reveal the keyframes and then go forward 15 frames. Keyframe the scale at 45. And for the rotation, I'm going to keyframe that at 135 degrees. And because we keyframe the scale and the rotation, we have these transparent edges for our background. So we're going to add a motion tile. Add that motion tile above the transform. I'm going to increase the output width and the output height to 400. Click mirror edges. From this point we're also going to go forward another 15 frames keyframe the scale back to 100 and keyframe the rotation back to zero easy ease all of those keyframes turn on the motion blur and now when i play this we have our background layer animating for the next effect we're going to add an optics compensation for this optics compensation we're going to keyframe the field of view to 120 at the center and then make sure to click reverse lens distortion click that layer click u to reveal the keyframes go towards the beginning keyframe the field of view back to zero and also the end at zero easy ease all those keyframes and by adding this effect it just creates that trippy background effect that we're looking for to make it look even more trippy we're going to add a turbulent displace for the displacement i'm going to change that to turbulent smoothie i'm also going to increase the size to 600 keyframe the amount at 50 in the middle and then keyframe the end as well as the beginning at zero make sure to easy ease those keyframes and then for the final effect we're going to add a glow increase the glow radius to 100 keyframe the glow intensity at one at the center and then keyframe both the end as well as the beginning at zero and of course you want to easy ease those keyframes. Now when I play this, we have that trippy distorted effect where the background slightly rotates towards the left and then it goes back to its original position. Now moving on to the second transition, this is more of a transition rather than an effect, but we're going to be adding a few effects onto an adjustment layer. So let's first begin by creating a new adjustment layer. We're going to be creating a rotation transition for this one. So let's first begin by creating or adding a motion tile, increase both the output width and the output height to 400 click mirror edges then go to where the cut is between these two clips and add a transform to this adjustment layer I'm going to first begin by keyframing the scale at 40 at the center because I want this transition to go from the regular size of the footage and then it gets smaller at the center where the cut is and then it goes back to its original size from this cut we're going to go back 14 frames keyframe the scale at 100 and then go forward 14 frames from the cut keyframe the scale at 100 easy ease those keyframes turn on the motion blur and go into the graph editor of these scale keyframes i want the influence here on the left side to be around 55 percent and i also want the end to be at around 55 percent so it starts off kind of slow at the start and it goes faster in the middle and then it animates out kind of slow i'm also going to keyframe the rotation at the start over here at zero degrees go forward 28 frames keyframe the rotation to one because i want it to rotate one full cycle easy ease those keyframes go into the graph editor for the influence on the left side i'm also going to have this at around 55 percent and now when i play this we have that rotation transition between these two clips, but we're going to add a few more effects to this adjustment layer. For the next effect, we're going to add an optics compensation. Keyframe the field of view at 130 at the center. Make sure to click reverse lens distortion, and then we're going to keyframe both the start as well as the end at zero. Easy ease all of those keyframes. Go into the graph editor and create a similar graph. 
We're going to now add one more effect, which is a radial blur. And by adding this radial blur, it just adds a little more motion blur to our transition. Keyframe the amount at 10 at the center, and then go to the start as well as the end. Keyframe both of those to zero. Easy ease those keyframes. Go into the graph editor, and then we're going to create the same graph. Now when I play this, we have that really smooth, trippy rotation transition. Moving on to the third and final effect, it's a really simple one. We're going to be creating this distorted background sliding effect. Let's first begin by rotoscoping our subject. After rotoscoping your subject, let's increase the feather to 10 and decrease the shift edge to negative 45. Duplicate this layer and also rename these layers as well. Make sure to delete the rotor brush effect for that background layer. And for the first effect, we're going to add a motion tile. Because we're going to be creating that slide up effect for our background, I'm going to increase the output height to 600. Click mirror edges. And then we're going to add a transform. Go forward six frames, keyframe the position. Go forward 24 frames and I want this background layer to slide up so you want to keyframe the Y value of the position until it reaches the original position of the layer. Easy ease both of those keyframes, turn on the motion blur and then we're going to add an optics compensation. Go back 12 frames from this keyframe, keyframe the field of view at 125, make sure to click the reverse lens distortion and then we're going to keyframe both the start as well as the end at zero. Easy ease all of those keyframes. Now when I play this, this is what we have for our final effect. We have that really smooth animation with the distorted background as it slides up. But those are three different ways that you can add some trippy effects to your edits. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.